Hold up, Beard. Don't you already have a merm guide for Pete's sake? Sure do, friends. But that's not only a year old, give or take, but also a video on merms as a mob as a whole. This here is a guide on the Merm King specifically, mind you. But why now, and for what reasons, you ask? Well, for one thing, his loot has gone under a bit of a change. For another, I'll admit that perhaps I have not given said loot enough credit where it's due. So then, let's change that. But before any bowing can be done, the king of all things green needs a place to rest his behind. And that's where the DIY royalty kit comes into play. Craftable by Wirt alone, the kit must be placed on marsh turf and then upgraded into the royal tapestry. But to do so will require kelp, pigskin, and beefalo fur. In some rather large amounts, too. So let's mention how to get some. Yes, kelp is found floating out at sea in shallower waters and can be picked, pushed, or even now uprooted. That is, if you have a strident trident in hand. Also, the Lunar Island Seas kelp to wash up on its beaches in great quantities as well. So make note there. But the pigskin could come from hammering pig heads found throughout the world, but mostly in the swamp, mind you. Pig houses drop guaranteed pigskin as well, where pigs can be forced to drop some too, or just roll the die with regular pigmen if all else fails. And lastly, the beefalo fur can come very easily from crafting a razor from under the tools tab, finding the herd, waiting till nights, and then shaving the beefs for your pleasure. So all in all, not too bad, really. So then finish the tapestry, and any nearby merm will come to plant itself right in the smack dab middle of it, and we'll just wait for service. Our service, mind you. For you see, we must feed this merm foods equating to 50 hunger, and only then will the king of the merms ascend to the throne, folks. Great stuff. But let's talk about how to keep him there, shall we? Because here's the thing. For how powerful he is, he is one lazy son of a gun. He will never move, and thus relies on us to do practically everything for him, including feeding the son of a gun. A Merm King has a maximum of 200 hunger, and loses about 50 of it every day. So if that reaches zero, he will begin to lose health over time, and then eventually die in roughly two days. So, stuff his face as much as you can, especially when playing works. But I wouldn't worry about mobs killing him per se, for a couple reasons. Cause chances are, you put him in the swamp proper. So there's not going to be much actually moving around there to even have a chance to attack him if you placed him properly in general. And besides, if anything happens to even hit the king, he can just spawn four loyal merm guards immediately. So all you have to worry about is feeding the sucker. However, what's so special about the merm king in relation to Wirt? Well, how about the fact that with a merm king alive and well, Wirt's stats rise from 150 health, 200 hunger, and 150 sanity at their base, to 250 health, 250 hunger, and 200 sanity overall. Big, big time gains that allow her to rival some of the best stats in the game for some of these characters. Very nice. Oh, and enjoy her new look too. But that's not all. Because every merm on the surface will also see their stats increase from 500 health and 30 damage to 560 health and 40 damage. All the while merm guards go from 200 health and 20 damage to 660 health and 50 damage. Yes, that's big. Oh, but don't fret non work players, as you will be getting some love today as well. For you see, when there is a king of the merms alive and active in a world, all other merms become completely non-hostile to other survivors. Heck, they even become less aggressive to certain creatures too. So that's great stuff. Take advantage. But ah yes, the whole bloody reason for this video essentially. Merm King Trading. The King of the Merms will accept freshwater fish from any pond found on the surface, and will accept as many trades as you can manage per day, mind you. Thing is though, freshwater fish are not our only option. The ponds of the caves produce eel instead, and a Merm King won't mind taking them off your hands either, so make note there. 
But lastly, not only will a Merm King accept trades throughout the night as well, very much unlike the Pig King, Ocean Fish from, uh, the ocean, will also suffice as tribute here. But Beard, I hear you ask, is the loot per trade even worth it? Heck yeah it is. 29% of the time, a trade will result in 2-4 to four kelp fronds alone. And kelp fronds are needed in fish dishes, barnacle recipes now, the milkmaid hat from Forgotten Knowledge, which is a newer craft, stand in as veggies alone, mind you, can be dried faster than literally anything else in the game, and are thus an amazing sanity snack because of that. Folks, kelp is a super food in this game. You gotta learn about it. But 14% of the trades will simply see seeds flying out of nowhere in bunches of 4 to 6. And with both the new changes to farming overall, and the fact that birds don't drop seeds in winter, a Merm King could be your ticket to an abundance of crops all year round. Great stuff. Oh, but don't count out rot, folks. No. Seriously, Rot is tremendously useful in Wormwood's crafts for healings, for example, can now be used by Wormwood to simply heal in general, is considered a fertilizer for the new farm plots, is needed to craft booster shots under the survival tab, mushroom planters, additional marsh turf as worked, and even the new composting bin for beat's sake. Plus, it can be used to fertilize berry bushes, grass tufts, and more without the need of manure. For real, folks, Rot is one of the most important things in this game, so enjoy another 14% chance of getting it per Mermy trade. However, here comes the combo trades that we should note. We also have a 14% chance to receive a single tentacle spot, along with 2-4 to four seeds, kelp fronds, Rot, or any combination of the three. And tentacle spots are needed for feather hats, wicker bottoms books, raincoats, melee weapons, work crafts, and more. So note that Merm Kings are what make tentacle spots renewable beyond Wicker Bottom now, essentially. And that's good. To continue, however, yet another 14% chance stands in the way of one of any of these five trinkets you see before you specifically, plus that same collection of seeds, rots, and fronds in some combination. Sadly, though, Wirt herself can't really use these trinkets beyond appeasing Antlion as the Pig King won't trade with her. But she will still help the team along by providing easy amounts of trinkets at the end of the day. And lastly, one final 14% chance remains. And with it, we can receive one to two of the specific crop seeds you see before you. As well as a more random set of seeds, rots, and kelp fronds as we've been getting. But this is pretty darn significant. Especially now, as said crop seeds could really make, well... Making crop combinations way easier than having a fuss with random seeds and then going from there, chances are not having what you actually need. So make note and enjoy. But Beard, I'm not worked. Ah, uh, yes, friends, no worry there. As long as you either have a wart on your team or can switch to her at will for a brief time, mind you, via the Celestial Portal. Option one would just have Wirt making clever disguises for the team to let whomever trade while the other is exactly as it sounds. Just change the Wirt, construct a tapestry, ascend a merm, make a disguise, switch back, and profit for the future. So good luck. However, since this is a Merm King guide of sorts, one last note here, everyone. No, a Merm King above ground will not have you carrying the effects down into the caves. If you want those stat boosts, you need to make another king. So get to it. And there you have everyone, somewhat of a random guide, yet still better suited guide to the King of the Merm specifically, and one that hopefully highlights his potential as that was the whole bloody idea. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, death to pigmen, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.